I'm Randy Week. I teach U.S. History at Manual High School, and for the past seven years or so, I've been trying to fight a battle to save the teacher's pension, which will affect some 130,000 active and retired teachers. It has been um, underfunded and riddled with secret investments, and I've had a uh, devil of a time trying to get my own teacher association to join in this fight of the pension for the past 15 years, which has brought the funding level down to something like 35 to 40 percent. Hi, I'm Yvonne Rivera. I teach Spanish to little people at Wilder Elementary. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of JCPS Leeds. So I'm about to let this guy in. Uh, he wants to tell us his story. And I want to ask him in particular what the union is doing about it because he doesn't have a job right now. I'm going to try and tell you Todd's story and he can correct me if he can hear me. And then um, it's been a while since he first reached out to me. But if I remember correctly, he was arrested for a domestic dispute that involved a family member and his principal found out about it and they got he fired he got fired for conduct unbecoming of a teacher and uh the union has him on uh waiting for uh whatever arbitration something like that so he's not getting his job back is that right even though everything you said was true to your principal okay i got a thumbs up Everything he said was true to his principal, but they still terminated him and he can't get his job back. And are you a member of the union? Yes, he is a member of the union. So why are they not representing him? Why are they delaying? Why is this delay tactic so common? And he's without a job until then. Is that normal, Yvonne? Does, shouldn't he have some other support? I think that the first thing they do to you cannot be firing you unless you're diddling children. Yeah. So I think they're on not very good grounds. Shoot us from that. Say that again, Randy. Central office paper pusher. Central office paper pushing. That's what they did with... Uh, a teacher that was at Manual, uh, and then they gave him a terrible, terrible spot as an itinerant teacher with a book cart out at Iroquois. And after two years of that, he just went to a different profession. So they tried to irritate him out of the system. So um, this was at Highland Middle School, is that right? All right. Um, Can you hear me now? Yes. There we go. Yes. So why don't you tell your story since you it's your story to tell and not mine. I'd rather get a recording of you. And by the way, I am recording, but I won't use this without your permission. Um, I just like to get okay. everything because sometimes people say some amazing things and I'm like, can I use that? And they usually say yes. So <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that's just an FYI. And um, would you start out by just telling us what happened? Tell us a little bit about your story and what happened. Okay. Um, um, on uh, January 31st, 2020, it would be, it was going right into, it was New Year's Eve. Uh, well, 2019 actually, and 20 was the worst year ever. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, I had a, um, a pro altercation with my fiance's son who had been living with us um, and it got physical and then I felt threatened with my children and that and so I pulled a weapon um, and in that process um, my finger got damaged there was the gun was involved the police were called um, I didn't stay around until because I had to go find my children uh, because they had ran police did a report they didn't file any charges Nothing was done at that time. Um, I went and to the hospital, got my finger taken care of. Everything was weren't running out. Uh, and then I went ahead and called my attorney. I called a, 
his name is Mike Burns, and he was my attorney for um, my legal matter. And um, there wasn't anything going on so far. I told uh, my fiance and her son they could live at the apartment until it was time, you know, time for us to move on and separate. Well, the son was uh, decided that he was going to file charges. And uh, when he did, um, I was, there was a warrant uh, for my arrest. They came to my second job at Von Mar uh, and placed me under arrest. I was taken in. They asked me questions, and I told them I couldn't talk to him because of my attorney. Um, then after that, they processed me down in corrections. Um, the next morning at 9 o'clock, I made bail, uh, and then I went home. It was a Saturday. Now, it was MLK Day on Monday, and so I, I didn't know anything to do. I was just talking to my attorney. I just sort of followed along, and then I noticed I was had absences for Monday, I mean, for Tuesday, the day after MLK LK Day, and I texted my secretary, I was like, who put in an absence for me? I don't, I'm not going to be out on Tuesday, and they said, I don't know. She said, let me find out. Then I got a call from Mr. Mr. Highland. He said, um, I need you to report to Van Hoos Tuesday morning before school, and we need to, we're going to have a meeting with the person in charge of human resources or whatever it is his formal title is. So we, I went in there and I waited and here come Mr. We sat down with and my rep uh, and she said, and so we sat there and I didn't know what it was really about. Um, she said, well, what they're going to do is they're going to put you in an alternate setting for being arrested. And I said, well, I didn't, you know, it's not even been determined yet what's wrong and nothing's really been processed yet. And she said, well, they're just going to do that as a temporary thing. Well, we did that. Um, I went to Burke's um, bus, Academy, uh, bus depot. I stayed there. Um, then I got a call from Mr. He wanted me to come in. I don't know the exact date. I have it written down. But anyway, I went in with him uh, and my, my rep, and we discussed. He wanted to know exactly word from word what transpired all up until this. So there is a whole entire account of it. Um, I have a copy of it. And he said, okay, well, we had a Zoom meeting with, this is one, uh, because he told me that it's probably going to have to go to, well, they call it, a, it's not an arbitration, it's a, it's like, you know, you, you step it up a notch, because he then told me that it likely was going to be terminated. Well, I was terminated supposedly on May 1st, um, that's what the official paperwork says. And it said, conduct on the becoming of a, a teacher. Now, my court, when I went to court, uh, I didn't get a, a felony offense. Um, my attorney said, just to stop it all and to get it all vanished away, he said, let's do a pretrial diversion. He said, that way you're clear of school being saying, well, you hold a felony. If we went to trial, you know, I could have that, could be washed away. He said, just on the off chance, let's do this. So... After two to, I think it's two to four years, whatever it is, everything's fine. It's totally off my record. Right now, it's not on there. I don't have a felony. I don't have anything. It just means that I've got to steer clear of any kind of trouble, and that's it. Well, I got my termination letter on May 1st, um, and it was sent to me verified through uh, certified mail, and that I was terminated due to main thing was conduct unbecoming of a teacher. Well, they also stated that I failed to inform Mr. of my transgression, and I, I didn't even know I was supposed to do that. I wasn't informed of it. I didn't even have time. It was a, it was a holiday. Uh, this happened over a weekend, so I wasn't charged or being charged when school was in. And could you have? I know. That's exactly. That's what they, that's what my attorney said, and that's what she said too she said you know that they said well you know there's no way you could have said that and I said well and then you know my attorney who I'll be honest with you I'd have to look his name up because I've only talked to him once because they put me off and said nothing's going to happen until arbitration and they said this may be spring early summer and I was like guys I'm hanging on about a string financially and I said 
I need to know something so I can at least adjust my lifestyle or financially tell people I'm not going to be able to meet these obligations, you know? And, but they don't care. You know, it's a deaf ear. It's like right now, nothing's going on. Nobody knows anything. And they said, well, it's because we can't get an arbitrator because of COVID. Now I have a hard time. And they said they have such a backlog. Well, I think it's Jefferson County dragging their feet or something. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'd pay for an attorney at this point just to, to get me in there and get it done. I don't care what I've got to do. It would be financially more rewarding if I just had a way of getting in there and, and trying to work this hammer this out. You know, I am, I would love to retire. I mean, I'd love to retire. I think I'm like, I have 26, what is it, 26 or 27.59. And they're trying to work it out at, Kentucky retirement to retire me and I said well I don't know what to do first I said I'll be honest with you I need income so any which way I can go I would love it um, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough to to carry that over because once they terminated me in May you know I lost all that time and I lost you know I don't know. I mean, it's just, and now with school being started back up and, you know, in August, you know, I missed all this and, and somebody said, well, they would have to give you your money back from your contract. I said, I don't even care at this point. I mean, I love to have the money back, be honest with you. Sure. But you know what? I'd rather just have my job back so I could be in. Yeah. And the longer they wait, the more they owe you. So it's not like that's, it's ever like, sometimes I feel like they operate. If they wait long enough, things just magically go away, but they don't. Um, Chris told well, and the other absolutely. thing is it increases the incentive because the money is more. Do you want your job back or this big chunk of money? And then people go with a big, as the chunk gets bigger, they're more likely to say, just give me the money and leave me alone. Absolutely. So, um, I can see that. I just let Chris Toby in the room. Hey, Chris. Um, we're talking with a, a, a JCPS employee that has not been getting adequate representation from his union, and I just have a couple more questions from him, and then we're going to come back and talk to you. So can you hang on just a second? Or if you hear something related to what we're talking about, feel free to chime in. Let me just ask you, Todd, real quick, um, the story you just told me, is there anything in there that you want me to not use publicly, or do you want to get this story out? Um. Just get the story out. It's fine with me. I have nothing to hide or conceal. Um, and I am so grateful for whatever anybody can do for me at this point. But I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I don't know who's on this panel and everything, but I really love my job. I love teaching. I've been a, you know, a true educator for all these years. Uh, I've never harmed a child in my life. You can look back at my, my record with the Educational Professional Standards Board. You know, I don't hold a, hold a felony. I don't, you know, I'm not, I didn't harm any children whatsoever. I just want my job back, please. And do you know, can you think of anything that you might have done while you were working at Highland Middle that might have put you in the crosshairs of one of the administrators where they were looking for a reason to get rid of you by any chance? No, I don't. I mean, I had my evaluations over the time that I was there from October 18th to, to the present whatever I was before we left, before I left. I mean, my evaluations were wonderful. I had good rapport with all the administration. Um, I had no comparing parent complaints. I mean, parents were actually, I had one little parent, one parent that asked me, can you get my child, can I get my child back into your class? She learned more than what's happening now. I felt really great. And, and I, pro I said, I'll try my best, you know, and I had great counselors. I'll be honest with you, there are so many people that reached out me out from Highland trying to get me back there. I understand where Mr. Bruce coming from because I'm sure it's coming from somewhere else. He's not going to stick his neck out because, you know, his neck's always on the chopping block, I'm sure. Um, so I, I don't hold him at fault. I just think that, you know, he's being told what to do and how to lead this when, when you have a personnel issue. I mean, I'm certified to be a, a principal myself. I know the law and I know what happens in your, you know, when this, but I have never in my life come up on trying to help, you know, hurt people at school or anything. So I, I don't know where this is coming from. I mean, he told me, 
specific, I mean, into the, to the panel there when we were meeting with everybody, he said, well, you know, I, I consider him a threat. What if he has this, this anger issue and presents a weapon at school? Well, that is so far-fetched in life that you know that's against the law to bring a weapon to school. That is a felony. Uh, I've held a, a gun license. I'm certain that there are people uh, who have done worse and still have their jobs. So how are they setting their thresholds? That doesn't make sense. I don't know. And I'll be honest with you. I know. Is it in writing somewhere that if you don't report it to your principal that they can terminate you? And and how did he uh, find that's what I want to know. That was the biggest question. All my friends were like, how did he ever find out this? And I said, I don't know. I said, maybe they get a list of arrests at, at, at Jefferson County. And she said, I don't think so. She said, that's not, you know, that's private information. I said, well, I don't know then. I have no idea who told this. Besides that, I really didn't think it would be a problem. I was going to explain it to everybody. It's not like I was going to hide it. I mean, how can you hide something like this? It's going to come out. <laughs> right, right. Oh, I'm so sorry that, that's hap that this is happening to you. Um, I think that uh, just putting your story out there and asking people, how can, you get your, how can you get justice to get your job back? We have a teacher shortage, for goodness sake, for goodness sakes, you know? So, uh, and apparently the union isn't able to, to support you. So maybe somebody else, find somebody who can. not I appreciate it greatly. I really would. I'd do anything for you were hired when when did you get when did you start at Highland Middle and who hired you? Um it was October, uh, I think it was like the eighteenth. Um gosh, I can't think of her name. Um Christy O'Bannon. Okay. They've had a lot of turnover my, at, at the one that hired me. Principals in Highland. Yeah, but they pushed Christy O'Bannon out too. So yeah, just a thought. All right, Todd. Well, I know you got to get back. Um, thank you for sharing your story with us. And if we are if we are able to get any traction with it, I will uh, be in touch. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, guys. All of you. Thank you very much for your help. Take care. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.